Hello everybody and welcome to this video of myself and Mr Alistair Penman, professional saxophone and clarinet player. And we are here to talk to you today about how to test out new and or pre-owned uh, saxophones. <laughs> now this is true of soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, albeit those instruments may have slight foibles which you know we may actually talk about as we go through this chat. But really where we're aiming this video is you've already had a student instrument uh, you want to upgrade to something, or you're already a reasonable player, but you want to try a new instrument out, what are the five things, we've got five topics, five areas we're going to talk about here, that you need to be conscious of and do to make sure you choose the right instrument and you test it in, in the most thorough way. So, Alistair, very experienced player and teacher, and through doing all these videos, over 100 videos uh, that you've done with us at Dorks, uh, you're an excellent person for us to talk to about this. So. First up, what's the first tip we would be giving people here? I mean, the first thing is choose the one that looks the most bling. Um, no, <laughs> of course not, joking aside. Um, the key thing when you're trying it out is you want to try it with your own mouthpiece and reeds because often what people will do is they get very excited about trying instruments. We'll go in, we'll try a new sax, try a new mouthpiece, try it all together and you can get easily very confused about what's making the difference. So if you're choosing new things, often you might want to get a new mouthpiece at the same time as a sax, but I would always start trying out the saxophones and use your own mouthpiece and read that you're used to knowing, and then you know how it, how it feels different to your own instrument. You know you're comparing everything on kind of the level playing field. Um, I mean, we could extend that to say you're an alto player, and you decide you want to get a tenor or a soprano and you want to try one, again, I would start off by using the equivalent mouthpiece on that instrument. Mm. So, for example, I've got a Selma Concept mouthpiece on here. If I were going to go and try out some sopranos and I hadn't played one before, I would ask through a Selma Concept mouthpiece to try on the sopranos or similarly on the tenor um, so you know you're kind of comparing um, across a similar sort of thing. Yeah, I suppose it's about removing variables. And as Alistair says, if you've got multiple things changing, you don't really know which one is doing what, which one's affecting the sound. So very sensible, use your own setup. Yes, you can upgrade that later in the process, even on the same day, but start, like Alistair says, with, with your own gear and have a reed that's not completely blown out, but not a brand new one, just one you've already blown in a little bit and you know the setup so that when you try the instruments, what you're testing is the instrument variation, not any of your own variations. So that's a really good point. Uh, tip number two, Alistair. So this is, if you play already, which if you're upgrading you will, you want to be comparing the new instruments against your old instruments, so you've got a benchmark. Um, there's no point kind of going and trying a whole load of new instruments, choosing your favourite, then getting home and thinking, actually I prefer my old instrument. <laughs> so there's nothing worse than that. Um, so again, you, you kind of you need a reference point, and then you can start thinking about why you like a particular sax better than the one you've currently got. You might think, oh, this has got a richer sound, it's got better key work, it just suits my playing better. Um, but it's always good to have a frame of reference, so always take your own sax with you um, when you're going to try new ones, and make sure you're comparing against you know, that as a kind of the benchmark, as well as looking at all of the new ones as well. Now here at Dorks we have a range of testing rooms so we can set you up in there and you can have your kit with you, we can have the new kit with you and you can try them back to back. I think the environment you try in is really important. I know some people watching this are not physically able to get to us in Berkshire in the UK and so we offer a mail order where you can try instruments for up to 14 days at home. But I think if you're in a busy store for example and there was no testing facility and you've got all sorts of other noise, stop you're not going to find the answer. Just find another way to do it, would be my advice on that. Um, let's talk a little bit about blowing, because obviously there's some sensible things about the gear we should try with or try against. Uh, but what's our third uh, chat and point here? So our third thing is tuning and intonation of the instruments, because this is a really, really crucial thing. It's quite easy to get carried away with a saxophone that has a really massive sound and feels fun to play. But if it's out of tune, you get home and go and play an ensemble and you're out of tune, then it's no good. It's just going to make your life hard um, forever, essentially. And there are a couple of notes on the sax that are always interesting notes to check tuning-wise. I mean, for me, whenever I'm testing a sax, I always play my favourite note on the instrument first, which is the F with the octave key down. I just find that the most resonant note on a sax, the kind of... And I 
can hear instantly that F major scale on this is sounding very true to itself, very in tune. Um, the notes that are interesting to check that are always problem notes on a saxophone are the C sharps, particularly in the middle and with the octave key on. What you find on a lot of saxes is the middle C sharp tends to be flat, the top one tends to be sharp. Um, for this video, I've actually just picked up a sax that is not one of mine um, as kind of an experiment in testing a new sax. This is currently in Dork's second-hand stock, actually. This is a Yamaha, sorry, Yanagi Sawa 992. Um, but I'm just going to, out of interest, play the octave C sharps without adjusting anything to see how they are. Actually, that's pretty, pretty, close. pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, um, that's without me adjusting anything on this. Normally, when I play, I have fingerings that I use on my sax that sharpen the middle C sharp and flatten the top C sharp. Um, if I try those now, it might be too much on this sax. Just... Actually, you can see this is more in tune than my sax because <laughs> with those, I can, I've now got my middle one was slightly too sharp and the top one was a little bit flat. But it's interesting, kind of, that's always a, a region to check and you find some saxes are better than others in that area. Some saxes even have adjusters that Selma Series 3 has an extra vent to try and make the, the middle C sharp sharper. Um, but that's a good um, note to check. Also, it's really worth checking kind of down to the bottom of the sax and right up to the top as well. Um, so you should be able to get right down to the bottom B flat. Now. Um, kind of getting down there and you can hear on this, the, to my ear, the bottom B flat is a tiny bit sharp, but um, you find that on most saxes. Again, I think it's probably more in tune than on my own sax. <laughs> um, this is going to end up walking away with this sax this, instead this of mine. This is the plan all along. Uh, I just set him it's up all a this. ploy. Yeah. Um, but after that as well, it's always worth checking up at the top. Um, and again, some people prefer the palm keys, some people prefer the front fingerings if you're playing right at the top that. Front F pops out really nicely on this particular sax. On some saxes, that top F can be a bit stuffy. But they're the sort of regions I'd be looking at in terms of tuning and intonation and things. Um, it's worth bringing a tuner with you, having it on your stand. You'll find, again, on some saxophones, you have to push further onto the cork to be in tune than on others as well. Um, so that's a, a good area to look at. Yeah, thank you, because there's a lot of stuff you covered there. I think as well, just to add to that, yeah, tune up first. It's amazing how many people just slap it on and start blowing. You're like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Just get tuned up and then test the instrument. I think the big caveat and the elephant in the room is every saxophone, just like every other wind instrument, will require some player intervention to manipulate tuning to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. It look Because of the uh, nature of the design, the conical nature of the design, it is impossible for just without any change to blow and every note to be in tune. That is not a realistic expectation, I'm sorry to say, and no instrument in the world does that, did that, or will ever do that. So what we're talking about, I suppose, is those boundaries of acceptable boundaries. Yeah. And if you know, okay, well, on this instrument, that is a bit sharp in that area, so I'm going to adjust for that. And or there's things we might be able to do. If it's palm keys, we can lower the venting, which will flatten the pitch. And so there's stuff that a specialist uh, technicians and specialist suppliers like ourselves can do with you to work on finessing those bits yeah. even further. Yeah, it's worth saying, if you find a sax you really like, but there are certain notes that are just off, it is, as Sam said, definitely go and talk to the workshop because there may well be easy fixes. There are some, some things that they won't be able to do anything about, but some keys they can just raise or lower the venting yeah. and it will make a difference to the tuning. And also you might find there are some quirks of intonation you're happier to live with on instruments than others. So like for me, I'm just so used to adjusting C sharps that they're now notes that don't really bother me on a sax. I just know where, know where they should be and play them accordingly. Yeah. And trying the alternate versions of lots of notes is a neat way to find as well how much sharper is the side one, the, you know, whatever it might be. So let's talk about number four, because really so far uh, we've covered a number of things, but the core of any instrument and our feelings about it and our wish to play it more come down to the, the sound and the response, don't they? Yeah. So that's what we want to look at in point number four. Exactly. And what you'll normally hear when people pick up a sax and start trying it is they'll play lots of fast, loud stuff. Um, so they'll do all the kind of... Or whatever and go wild on it. Um, and actually that's not very helpful in testing a sax because what you really want is you want to choose an instrument that makes a great sound. So for me, as I said, I always start on that, that kind of... I 
and that way I can kind of hear the core of the sound of the instrument and I can feel how that's resonating as well. So I want a sax that feels like it's letting me get a really rich sound out of it. And I also want that to be even across the range. So a really good thing to do is playing scales just slowly up and down that. And that'll give you a really good feel for the instrument through its sound. You can also see how much you can push the dynamics. So for example, could I start crescendoing and from nothing on this instrument and take it to a really loud dynamic. I'm now going to get told off by Sam for distorting the <laughs> microphone, but that sort of thing. Um, and it's, it's seeing how much kind of what sound the instrument has, how much flexibility it's got as well, whether it's a sound like, whether it's something you connect with. Um, I mean, on top of that, I mentioned about playing fast, kind of the action of it is important. So you want something that feels smooth under the fingers. But generally, that's something that can be adjusted. For example, if the venting is high and you want it lowered, that can be adjusted by a workshop. The core of the sound of the instrument isn't something you can change. You can't just suddenly be like, oh, I've got a bronze sax, but I prefer the sound of the silver plated one or a, a yeah, yeah. lacquer one. Um, so I would always think kind of really look for the sound, home in on the sound that you like. Yeah, no, definitely. Because at the end of the day, you've got to want to pick it up and blow it. And wind instruments are such physical things. It's not like we're just pressing a button and an electric noise is made. You have to be one without going too zen on you. But you have to feel like you can work with the instrument to create music, right? It's not just playing the notes. We're doing it to create music, to have that feeling of emotion, either to express in the piece or to express yourself, whatever it might be. So there needs to be that union between you and the instrument. And so often when people ask us, oh, well, there's so many, I don't really know where to, what to choose. Well, if you can get to us to try them, that really is the best way. If not, in we doing it by mail order, then our team can obviously help point you in the right direction based on your current setup, what type of sound you like. Are you looking for something dark? Are you looking for something bright? Do you do more classical? Do you do more jazz? All these straightforward questions, but you've got to have that concept in your mind yeah. before you get into the testing. So just as we come to the, the final point, Alistair, this is about the ability to try in an extended fashion, isn't it, I suppose? Making sure you've got the right thing once you've made that choice. Yeah, so final tip is basically anything you're gonna buy, make sure you take it away and try it in a room you're familiar with. Try playing it in bands you're used to playing with to get the feel, because often things can feel quite different when you get home to how they felt in a shop. Um, one of the things I like here at Dorks is the testing rooms here are fairly dead, so you can actually hear yourself. There are some stores that will remain nameless that have incredibly boomy, echoey practice rooms. And one of the things is that is you can't hear yourself very well. You can't hear what's going on. Another thing is sometimes, I think it used to be done slightly deliberately, these boomy rooms with a bit of an echo make you sound better because it's almost like there's a built-in reverb. And mm. that was the idea. So you try stuff um, in the store and think, oh, this is absolutely great. Then you get it home and be like, actually, I think I prefer what I had before. So it's, it's great. Anything you're going to buy, make sure you have the option to at least, I mean, if you buy from Dorks, I think you get at least 14 days, 14 days um, yeah. that you can return it. So make sure you've got that option so that you can take it away, try it in a familiar environment, make sure it's definitely definitely what you want and you can give it a good extended play as well. I mean, this is all very well trying something through an hour or so, but having it for two weeks to play is sometimes a different kettle of fish and you want an instrument that you're going to enjoy playing essentially and makes a sound that you want. Yeah, cool. So those are our top five tips, uh, hopefully they've been of use to you. There's one final one I'm gonna finish with, which is just to enjoy it, enjoy the process. You might be about to part with hundreds and or thousands of pounds. The testing experience should be, if you're going to the right place, obviously I'm gonna tell you to come here if you can, but if you might be watching this in the States or wherever, if your experience of testing and the store helping you is not good, don't give them your money. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. We, we, we should be working here to help you have a nice experience. Trying instruments should be really interesting and really cool to do. If you can get your teacher in as well, great. You can all have a nice day out. Bring someone that maybe knows you're playing or, as Alistair says, use that extended trial period. But try and enjoy it. You know, it's something if you do it right, you'll only do one or two times in your life. 
Uh, and it's a cool thing just to try all the different makes and models, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's our tips for trying out new instruments, especially saxophones. Just before we go, any other thoughts regarding soprano, alto, tenor, baritone? We've touched on a couple of things. I just want to add in with baritone that reach and layout, I think that's probably one of the most important things on baritone, hitting that low A. Can you get around it at speed? Yeah, and particularly on baritone, if you are, if it is, say, students at school and things, making sure they can reach and get to it. But also baritones, I personally, I find baritones have more variation in the size of the key work. Mm. So some of them feel not hugely different from playing an alto, it's just your hands are further apart, where some of them feel really big and clunky. Um, so it's worth kind of looking at things like that. I mean, there are other details as well um, in kind of the, this is going more into the different brands, but some of them have much better kind of quality control and things than others, and some of them are made more consistently, some of them are easier to get parts from and things. Yeah. And there are lots of different manufacturers would have put certain little clever things on. I've just noticed on this Yanagi Sara I've got here, for example, this bottom C has this kind of double arm here, and that's a really nice thing to know that, that that's always going to seal properly because sometimes that's a key that can be more difficult and it's it put it on the B as well. But sometimes there are these little features to look out for, um, and you get that across the whole range. Um, sopranos, um, just quickly, are the ones to watch out for most are intonation. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones yeah. where you get the biggest variation. There tends to be soprano, often people struggle struggle with soprano if they haven't played it before. Um, and soprano is the one where I would say it's worth investing that little bit more money if it means you've got a sax that is going to play in tune for you. So again, try them all out. But you do find particularly with soprano, you slightly get what you pay for in terms of the intonation on them. Yeah, yeah, good. Cool. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you made it all the way through to the end, we wish you the best with your choice of a brand new instrument. And why not do that through Dorks, of course. If you can come visit us in Maidenhead, that's great. We've got lots of testing rooms. And if you can't, then do it by mail order with us. We supply people all over the world now, and we get lots of great reviews from people who've shipped, who we've shipped things to in other parts of the world, and we can help you still in the same way. But thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and you'll hear from us again very soon. Cheerio for now.